Here's how I made this drawing in Adobe Illustrator using mostly basic shapes. I started out with a basic circle with the ellipse tool and I stretched it really wide to give it the illusion of some perspective of the top side of an object. I used another basic circle to make the bottom part of the vase and I grabbed the two left and right points and I pressed S for my scale tool and I scaled it slightly so the circle was a little bit off and not perfect. And I used the rectangle tool to make the top part and I grabbed the bottom two points and scaled them closer together to create like a trapezoid or whatever that shape is called. I lined up these three pieces to make the base shape of the vase. Then I used the shape builder tool to merge the bottom two pieces. I offset that path by a few pixels to make the water inside the vase. Then I copied my circle to make the top surface of that water. Here's a good tip. Press command K to open your settings and make sure that you have the option to scale strokes and effects unchecked. When you have it turned off, you can scale your objects without affecting the size of the stroke. So you'll maintain whatever stroke that you've chosen from the beginning across all shapes, no matter how many changes you make. I switch into outline mode every once in a while to make sure that my lines are matched up perfectly because I use the shape builder a lot in this technique. So I need to make sure that there's no crazy overlapping paths or spots where the paths aren't touching at all. I use the shape builder to knock out the top part of that offset path and I get a really nice water effect inside of the vase. Then I make sure to group all of my pieces together so I can move on to the next part. I didn't do a great job of drawing this leaf the second time around for the tutorial, but I took my time whenever I was drawing the first one and I used my pen on my Cintiq tablet so I could draw directly on the screen. If you want a list of the equipment that I use, check the link below. I've got a whole list of my entire setup, everything that I use for graphic design and making these tutorials. Once the leaf was drawn the way I wanted it, I drew one little line to make a stem going down the vase into the water. I drew another circle to make the top of the coffee cup. I copied it straight down and then I used the rectangle tool to make a box that connected the two from all all four left and right points. Then I use my shape builder to connect the bottom two and knock out the top shape so that that one's still visible. I made another circle with the ellipse tool. This time I grabbed the top and bottom points and scaled those out. Then I copied this shape, pasted it in front, shrunk it down and knocked it out to make the handle of the coffee mug. I scaled the handle back up a little bit and you can see my strokes didn't change. Then I just moved it over to the cup, sent it behind and I had a perfectly good coffee cup. This is, excuse me, a damn fine cup. I made sure to group all of my items as I went because I knew I was going to want to tweak the layout and the arrangement of everything later on. I did a quick sketch of the steam coming out of the coffee and I think the one I drew in the original was a lot better. I was trying to power through these things for the second time around for this tutorial. I drew another stretch circle for the top of the ramen bowl and for the bottom of the bowl I actually used a rectangle and then grabbed the bottom two points and rounded them really far to give it that nice bowl shape. I used the shape builder tool to knock out the excess of the rectangle and then I used another smaller rectangle to create the bottom of the bowl. I merged that rectangle with another circle to give it a little bit of rounded edge at the bottom just to keep with the consistency of the rest of the drawing. Keeping your smart guides on is a good idea so that way you can always lock in your lines and points so that way they meet up perfectly and it makes it really easy to use the shape builder tool. For the noodles, I just drew a bunch of squiggly lines over the top of the bowl to make things easy. And for the chopsticks, I just started with the long rectangle and I drew one solid line between them. Then I grabbed the bottom two points of the rectangle, and scaled them out left and right so that I got kind of a little bit of a taper shape. So it looks like the chopsticks whenever they are still connected before you break them apart. I grouped the bowl and the chopsticks separately just in case I needed to move them around separately later. For the iPhone and YouTube screen, I just started with the rectangle and rounded out the corners. I drew a really small rectangle for that little notch in the iPhone screen and a solid line on the left side just kind of representing the UI whenever you swipe up. I drew one more rectangle in the center and I used the star tool to create a perfect triangle for the YouTube play button. For the water bottle, I started with the long rectangle and I created my same stretched circle to create the rounded bottom. Once those pieces were connected with the Pathfinder, I grabbed the top two points and I rounded the corners as much as I could to make a perfectly rounded top. I used my stretched circle and rectangle method to make a lid. Then I just copied that lid and shrunk it down behind itself to make that little stem coming off the round part of the bottle. This is where having your scale strokes turned off is super helpful because then you can just copy these shapes and stretch them and scale them and move them all around and it won't really affect the strokes no matter how many edits you make to it. I Use the same technique for the vase to make the inside water on this bottle. I freehanded some of these line details just using my Cintiq to draw straight on the screen. For the Wacom pen, I started with a long rectangle, then I added a small square to the top with the intention of grabbing all of these points and scaling them out left and right to create another like trapezoid shape. I used a basic line to make the nib and I used a rounded rectangle to create the shape of the buttons that are on the pen. I added one more square to the bottom and I rounded out the bottom two points to represent the eraser side of the pen. For the cactus, I started with the top part of the planter 
using the same stretched circle and rectangle approach. And then I copied the circle to the bottom, created a square, and tapered the top two points to give it that perfect planter shape. On the actual cactus, I started with a circle and I selected the left and right points and I scaled these up a lot more than I did on the base. This gave it a little bit more of a boxy circle shape that I felt looked a little bit cooler and more stylized for the plant. I copied that shape and pasted it in front and then I scaled it in on itself just to create two extra lines inside of the plant. To create the spines, I used the line segment tool to create just one at the very top in the very center. Then in my object menu, I chose repeat radial. This allows you to create a perfectly round repeat of one object in Illustrator. Just grab this handlebar from the top, stretch it up to create a bigger circle. Then you can just grab this path and center it over the cactus object. I shrunk it down just a little bit so that we would line up better to where I want it to be. Then you can grab this handlebar on the right and increase the instances of your object. It didn't count, but I just made sure that I always had one in that same starting position. Then these bottom handlebars will allow you to pull left or right and hide instances so that you can keep them just in certain segments of your repeat path. I used my pencil tool to make a little hash mark for the inside spines, and then I copied that spine to the bottom of the path and rotated it to mirror the angle. Then I used my blend tool to create some instances between the two. I specified the amount of steps that I wanted in the blend tool options, and then I copied the path that I wanted these to align to, made it the exact size that I needed it to be, selected both objects, went back to my object menu, selected blend, and clicked on replace spine. Now I had a perfectly spaced out and repeated spine image for the inside of the cactus that I could just flip to the other side. I grouped this whole cactus, put it in place, copied it, and placed a smaller version of that copy on top of it. Once I had everything arranged in the way that I liked it, I just added another stretched ellipse to the bottom to create that big black shadow. I grouped all of these objects together and set them to multiply so they would drop to my background color. All right, here's my last trick that I haven't shown yet. So when I make these drawings, I usually post them to my Instagram. But before I post them to Instagram, I actually open them up in the Visco photo editing app. I use this app to tweak my color slightly, but also most importantly, to throw a lot of grain on them. That grain gives it this nice texture Texture, and I don't know why, but for some reason, the grain in Visco just looks so much better and so much more natural to me than the options that you have in Photoshop. Then I can just hop right over to Instagram and make these posts. If you want to see how I take this to the next level and make it look like it's actually hand-drawn, watch this video. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.